Have you ever had a discussion with an atheist or a non-believer that tried to challenge you with this question? Well, this question isn't my favorite of the omnipotence paradoxes, but I'm certainly happy to see if I can defend it. So, you theist you, can God create a rock so big even he can't lift it? <laughs> Hello everyone, your friendly neighborhood atheist here. The music you just heard was by a groove-laden death metal band from Chile called Ex Ethos off their first release entitled Simplicitatis Complexus. They play some pretty cool stuff, so if you like what you hear, check them out. Their Bandcamp page can be found below. Today I'm taking a look at a video that purports to answer the old, old questions often posed by people when God's omnipotence is discussed. The channel this is from is a presuppositional apologetic known as Veckel. The original video can be found below. So, without further ado, let's dive right in. I bet, like myself, you were stumped when you first heard this question. Because if you said yes to the question, then the non-believer or atheist will say, then if he can't pick up the rock, that means he's not all-powerful. But if you said no to the question, then the non-believer or atheist would say, then if he can't create a rock so big, then that would also prove that he's not all-powerful. Well, I'm glad you can admit that. It's easy to see the temptation here to deny the challenge that questions like these pose. It makes you sound smart, gives your supportive audience confidence, and attempts to make people who would use this question look stupid. Overall, I much prefer the honest approach you take here, admitting that this question is a difficult one. It's by recognizing that there might well be two sides to this question that we can have an interesting discussion. But this is an example of what's commonly called the fallacy of complex questioning. The fallacy of phrasing a question that, by the way it is worded, assumes something not contextually granted, assumes something not true, or assumes a false dichotomy. In a sense, you're right, but I wouldn't be so quick to see this as a fallacy. The presupposition this question rests upon is that the respondent holds that God is omnipotent, that he has the ability to do anything. This is a common trait ascribed to God. So, the question rests upon the fairly reasonable assumption that the respondent believes that God is omnipotent, and the more questionable assumption that omnipotent means the ability to do anything. The single task, as stated, is a pretty simple one. I can go out into my backyard and pile on a bunch of rocks until I have a pile so big I can't lift it. So it is certainly coherent to ask, can you create a rock so big you can't lift it? And it is also logically possible to be able to do so. But if an agent can do anything, it follows that he could lift any rock, no matter the size. This poses a problem for the simple definition of omnipotence as the ability to do anything, since either the agent cannot have the ability to lift every rock, or he cannot have the ability to do what I and anyone else can do, which is make something so big he can't lift it. So the fallacy you've pointed out is only a fallacy if you are using a different definition of omnipotent, in which case I am eager to hear your new definition. Now the person asking such a question shows that they most likely are not willing to attain an answer that comports to what's actually laid out in scripture regarding God's nature. Why? I mean, I'm perfectly happy to hear your answer. The only thing this question implies is that the asker does not think the common definition of omnipotence is logically consistent. It's a hypothetical question that's premised by a false dichotomy, and it also shows that they're not willing to receive a genuine answer at all. Whoa, slow down there, buddy. Now you're throwing out another logical fallacy, and this time it's one that isn't really there. A false dichotomy is when a question is presented with only two options when there are, in fact, more than two possible answers, such as, is Mary wearing a blue dress or a red dress? It's possible that Mary is wearing a green dress, or something other than a dress. In the case of the question, can God create a rock so big even he can't lift it, the dichotomy is sound. Either he can create such a rock, or he cannot. Since the choice involves a simple negation, there is no false dichotomy. They're presupposing that God is not all-powerful by asking the question. Well, I think that most who ask this question are non-believers, so they don't assume anything about God because they don't think God exists. But again, it really just depends on what definition of all-powerful you are using. 
I'd be perfectly happy to grant that the god you believe in is all-powerful by your definition, as long as your definition is logically consistent. But one way to answer this silly question, this silly question, this silly question, and you just blew it. Remember all that stuff I said at the beginning about how I appreciated the fact that you acknowledged the complexity of this subject? Well, you just blew it. You just went back to egotistically insulting your audience. Well done there. But one way to answer this silly question is simply by saying no. Why? Because they misunderstand the definition of all power or omnipotence. Okay, finally. You really should have opened with this because this is how you can honestly answer the question by providing a consistent definition of omnipotence. Okay, now, let's get started. True omnipotence is not the idea that God can do anything inconceivable, but that he can do anything that is consistent within his nature. Omnipotence is the ability to do anything that is consistent with his nature. Really? That's what you're going with? Well, consistent with his nature is a bit vague, but it sounds like it means something like all things he has the ability to do. But that would be absurd because it would reduce omnipotence to a tautology. Omnipotence is the ability to do all things he has the ability to do. By that definition, I'm omnipotent. Heck, my cat is omnipotent. If you define omnipotence like that, then you're basically saying nothing about what God can do, which is the whole point of the word omnipotent in the first place. That God can do many things that are humanly impossible. When we say that God is all-powerful, it simply means that God is able to accomplish all that he desires to do according to his nature. Okay, uh, you just changed your definition twice. God can do all things that are humanly impossible, and God can do all he desires according to his nature. The first addendum is actually interesting, and while vague, is a step toward quantifying God's abilities, but your other addendum simply takes us back to a tautology. He can do everything he desires that is in accordance with his nature, or, in other words, he can do everything he desires that he has the ability to do. Heck, even with both addendums, my cat is still omnipotent, because if it desires, it can run faster than is humanly possible, and that is consistent with its nature. And all that mankind is not able to do. All that mankind is not able to do. That's a very broad brush, but at least it's consistent with your assertion earlier that God cannot create a rock so big he can't lift it. However, this still leaves other omnipotence paradoxes unsolved, such as, can God create another omnipotent being? So are there things that God cannot do? Absolutely. He cannot not be God and be God at the same time. That makes sense. He cannot lie. He cannot sin. He cannot do anything contrary to his nature. So lying and sinning are contrary to God's nature. I get that. But again, saying that what he can do is defined by his nature makes a tautology. My cat cannot do things contrary to her nature. Does that make her omnipotent? So... The non-believer or the atheist can try to claim victory all they want when raising this question. It's not a victory, and I hope no one would claim that. The purpose of questions like these is to try to show the absurdity of claiming the existence of an extant omnipotent being. The question is designed to show the believer that, in order to define and defend their god, they need to be more careful with the powers they ascribe to him. But in the end, the question is arbitrary and has a false premise. What false premise? You still haven't satisfactorily defined omnipotence, and you haven't laid out any premises in the original question that you can test, aside from that. Let me give an example of how the atheist, or the non-believer, will immediately reject this kind of questioning once it's brought back to them. Here's the question. If God exists, but he's not all-powerful, then isn't it also true that he does not have the power to create intelligent atheists? Okay. First off, I reject the idea that God exists. That's sort of the point. Second, saying he's not all-powerful does not specifically limit his capabilities in any way. He might have the ability to create intelligent atheists, or he might not. Thirdly, your question is hardly analogous to the original question, which is asking whether or not God has a certain trait. This question asserts that if God lacks a certain trait, he must also lack another trait, which is a statement that you would have to defend. Now, the atheist may say, that's incorrect. God can create intelligent atheists. Ah, so then you admit that God does exist. See my first objection. Or the atheist may say, incorrect. God does not exist. Ah, well, if God does not exist, then he doesn't have the power to create intelligent atheists. 
No, because he doesn't exist. Intelligent atheists could arise without God. This objection is childish. Or the atheist may say, uh, that's incorrect. God does not exist, but intelligent atheists do exist. Ah, so for you to know that God does not exist requires you to have an omniscient knowledge, which is an attribute of God, which therefore indicates that you must be God himself in order to have the omniscient knowledge to know that God doesn't exist. Therefore, according to your logic, a God exists. This is even more childish. I believe that no God exists, and until I am proven wrong, I am justified in that belief. This is Atheism 101. So, as you can see, this can God create a rock type of question is fallacious and dishonest. It's clear evidence that when a person asks this question, they are either doing it dishonestly with the intent to deceive the believer into answering the question in a manner that appeals to their liking, or it is a question asked out of pure ignorance of the true definition of the word omnipotence. Which you haven't defined. The real intent behind asking this question, as I said, is to get the theist to define their god coherently, so as to have a rational conversation over the existence of said god. So, since God is the creator of all things, therefore he has the power to do various things that we do not have the power to do. This does not mean that he can violate his own nature. You're right, it doesn't, but you have to define his nature properly for that statement to mean anything. And I think Saiten Bruggengate answered this question fairly well, which is another example of how we can answer or respond to such a question. Uh, I'm saying that God exists because he's told us, he's told each and every one of us. That's why we're without excuse for our sin against him. So, I know that statement had nothing to do with the argument at hand, but I just have to say, how do you know that God has revealed himself to me, Sai? Uh, from my perspective, I don't know that he has, so his revelation must not have been very powerful. If God is all-powerful, can he change his nature? No. Then how can he be all-powerful? Because changing one's nature is not part of being all-powerful. Because the, the, the fallacy would be to say, if God is all-powerful, he has to be able to change his nature so that he's not all-powerful. Which is fallacious. Why? I mean, I can tie a hand behind my back, for example, thus making myself less powerful. Can God do something like that? I mean, if you want to go into it, the, the question is, can God make a rock so big that he can't move it, that he can't lift it? That's the same type of logical fallacy. And I say, if you want a God who can be able to do the logically con inconsistent, I say, yes, God can make a, a rock so big that he can't lift it. And then what are you going to say? Well, then God can't lift that rock and he's not omnipotent, he's not all powerful. And I say, no, a God who can do the logically con fallacious can lift a rock that he can't lift. See, so to, to posit that God can do the illogical is nonsense. God cannot do the illogical. Doing the illogical is not a characteristic of omnipotence. But the act of creating a rock so big its maker can't move it is not logically inconsistent, as I've shown. So either God can have the ability to create a rock so big he can't lift it, or he can have the ability to lift any rock. He cannot have both. But since they are both logically consistent abilities, he must possess both of them in order to have every logically consistent ability, in other words, to be all-powerful. Therefore, he cannot be all-powerful. In other words, you still need to define omnipotence. And literally the entire rest of this video is Bible verses, which I see no reason to believe are true any more than any of this. You know the manager? That guy, yes. You know the guy's name? I'm telling you that name. Well, who's on first? Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who? The guy on first. Who? The guy playing first base. Who? The guy on first. Who is on first? What are you asking me for? I'm asking you. <laughs> what's the guy's name on first? Now, what's on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? That's what I'm asking you. Now, who's on minute. first? Don't, don't change the place. I'm not changing nobody. I ask you a simple question. What's the guy's name on first base? What's the guy's name on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who is on first? I don't know. He's on third. Now we're not he talking is. about him. What's the guy's name on first base? Why is the guy's name on second base? Who's playing second? Who's playing first? I don't know. He's on third base. <laughs> All I'm trying to find out is what's the guy's left name in left field? Now what is on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. Third, third base. base. What's the guy's name on first base? What is on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. He's third base. I know that. Now listen. Who is not? I'll break your arm if you say who's on first. <laughs> I want to know what's the pitcher's name. What's on second? I don't know. Third base. So I throw the ball to first base. Right. Whoever it is drops the ball and the guy runs to second. Now who picks up the ball and throws it to what? Yeah. 
What throws it? I don't know. I don't know. Throws it back to tomorrow. Triple play. Could be. And now that guy gets up and hits a long fly ball to be caught. Yes. Why? I don't know. He's on third, and I don't give a darn. What'd you say? I said I don't give a darn. Oh, that's a short stop. <laughs> and so, there you have it. My take on that old question. Well, this has been an interesting video to make. Anyhow, uh, this has been your friendly neighborhood atheist, and until next time, best wishes. <laughs> Caminando por, pecho de este hombre